Welcome back to part 3 of the Mori Tour. By now you should have actually matched up the dirt map to how you like it and how actual dirt would represent on the actual anvil. And we can go back to the actual channels tab and we can see we have reached the little colour tab then the dirt mask. We actually have over here a dirt. We can rename this dirt colour. So we just double click on this. Dirt colour. Gives a bit more reason and meaning to what the actual channel is. So for this one, we need to do is actually pick a dirt color which will show through the actual dirt mask. And what we need to actually pick here is a kind of a moldy color because they've got a rust on the actual anvil. We want a bit of mold to come through. Not too brown, not too green, just a little bit in between. So now we're going to pick this kind of a daily green color over here. So we're going to need to actually make the color come through the foreground and background. So what we need to do first of all is actually select the piece that we need. We should go into UV mode on this one. What we should do is we can actually pick the lasso tool or the actual group tool. The lasso tool actually make you any shape that you actually want, and the group tool actually make a geometric shape to grab onto. We actually have three ways of actually selecting the actual model. The initial one is object mode, which selects the entire thing. We have patch mode, which we've been using, which selects the individual UV patches. And we have face mode, which will select the individual faces of the geometry. So if you use the lasso tool, you actually draw around the area that you wish to actually use. And you can paint within this area. What you can also do is once you've selected this, is you can right click on the model and you can say hide the selected or hide unselected. And you actually work on a piece of the actual model that you want to work on without actually affecting everything else in there. So we just pick the actual shortcuts for the actual brushes. You can either pick on the actual the J, K, or L. J will actually be for your actual color, K will be for your brushes, and L will be for your actual image manager. So now just paint on there, you can press to hide the buffer. And we just deselect everything. We actually see, we zoom out, we're painting just a selected area in there. So there's many, many ways of actually selecting different parts and isolating parts of your model and painting on them individually. So if we just uh, stop this and shoulder up the actual model we need and zoom out and if we do a group selection so the entire model will be selected and what we need to do is go to patches and in here we have the fill background and fill foreground options background and foreground so we just select it fill it with the actual foreground color which you've just chosen which is a nice dirty green we have a nice color come through so we go back to channels so now we've completed the color, the dirt color, and the dirt mask. What we need to do is we work on the disk broad using the actual existing channel, the color. And also we're going to be working on the actual spec rough using the existing color channel as well. So what we need to do first of all is select like this and delete this current channel. What we need to do is select on the color, and what we need to do is to right click and duplicate. And just rename this. Spec pass. If we make the A lowercase quickly, there we go. What we need to do again is actually work on the actual disk pass as well. So now we have the actual spec pass which we need. What we need to do first of all is actually hide this and go into filters and go to hue. And we can change this into a black and white image to affect the actual color gradients of this. Refine it to black and white. Not too dark, not too light. There we go. What I want to do with this one is actually have a nice high contrasting image. There we go. So we've got a nice black and white spectrum on this one. What we need to do is assign this to the actual current channel. Or the actual current selected faces. So it applies it to the entire model in the channel itself. Are you happy with this? We can click apply. And it'll just bake this into the actual spec pass layer. So now we actually have the white areas where the actual spec of the pass will actually reflect light onto. So what we need to do is actually create our own disk broad pass as well. So we need to do the same thing again for this. We simply select it. And we need to remove the channel. And we've got our color pass. And see right we can duplicate this again. So we're using our existing channels which we've painted to create new channels rather than painting them from scratch. And it's my disk broad pass. Do the same thing. We simply go to actual filters and hue again. And we need those. It's like a nice light 
color black and white, so not high contrast like that you'll spec pass. Just have a little bit of color difference in this. So we apply this again to the current channel. Apply this and bake it down. So now we've got ourselves a disk broadcast. Now we create a disk fine pass. Now this is little scratches in the actual anvil itself. So the little fine detail passes that we need to apply to the model itself. So tiny little scratches, little bumps, little bits of uh, wear and tear that will occur on the edges or wherever we need this to be. So we need to first of all actually select this again and make it white using the actual color tab. So we need a white background. What we need to do is go into our brush settings and in these we need to pick a nice one that us give us some scratches so like, like metal work has actually been taking place on the actual anvil itself. So look in this one, we should have metal scratches as an actual preset tab. There we go. They're a bit too close together for our liking, so we need to modify these just a little bit. Line these up a little bit. It's a bit too thick. We need to make them really fine. There we go. That's some nice scratches. And then just turn the noise a little bit. Opacity. Just get them looking the way we want them to. Now you can change this to the way you feel that your scratches should become, or you can change it to have no scratches and basically put whatever you want on the actual model. So if we just uh, change this up, we can select this to black. And well, what we can do, this is a shortcut key, we can hit X to swap between the foreground and background colors. So if we're doing a bit of fast painting between two different types of colors on the model, hit X to switch between them. And that's a nice little scratch we have in there. Make sure we turn the actual edge masking on so the actual paint doesn't bleed over the edges and cause smudging. That's the kind of thing we need, so we're just going to actually clear the buffer on this one. Now the top of the anvil is where the most wear and tear is. So we actually hit the numeric key to go on top of this one, that's number three. I'm going to go into projections and just modify the actual edge mask settings we have over here. There we go, that should be fine. Just create little scratches just on top of the actual anvil itself. This is where the most work has actually taken place in the anvil, or its job is to be modified metal. So just bake this down. There we go, just clear the buffer so we got rid of that one. Now if we look at this, it should have a nice pass. So if we select the actual selection tool here, and we can actually see that we've actually painted all the different passes that we need to actually reconstruct this for the shaders in the end process of actual modeling and texturing this whole thing. So we've used actually all the tools we need from the actual Mori tool setup, apart from one. We can look at this now. So the next tool we need to use on this actual model is the actual toe brush. So we've used every single other tool upon here, the majority of them. The next one uses toe brush. And then we have three different options in here. We have the actual clone, the heel, and the move feature brush. So we're going to do actually use the clone tool. We can actually use the lasso to actually select where we want to actually do this actual option. So we can place this wherever we want. Now the clone tool clones from the selected region to another part of the surface. Now this is the actual default mode of the tool set itself. So you can pick this over here, we can move it around and do whatever we need to this. So just select what we wanted. The next feature in this one is the actual heel tool. Now this overwrites the selected region with another part of the surface. Now that is the clones a texture under your mouse over the selected area. So we just select one and we can actually move this to where we need to. So we can actually select the area which we need to replace our actual selected tool. So if you wanted a bit more actual rust from the top area, we can actually select this and it will actually blend in the edges to what we need to clone to. Obviously, we can't clone outside of the actual anvil area itself in this one, it actually turns white. The last selection tool we have in this is the actual move feature tool. Now, this swaps the actual contents of the selected region with another area of the surface. So, what we need to do is actually select this, and we can pick up the area we want, and we can swap it with another selected area. So, it's a very nice tool for actually duplicating and replicating areas that we need on this actual model. See, we can just move them around. Very, very easy to use, very, very powerful. And it also blends in the edges from where we actually need. So if we drop this down and bake this in, we actually see that the area around 
if I actually break this in, it will be actually perfectly formed. So if I just delete that one, I can go in again and choose this. So the next step in this process is to use our created channels and combine them in a shader. 